Hi, I'm Christian Krobola and I'm a South African filmmaker and I went to China twice to shoot a documentary. I mean, I'm, I want to say the same thing. Um... <laughs> no, you can't steal my thing. I know. Okay. Hi, I'm Jakub von Bosch. Uh, I am a South African director, I a post-production person and I went to China as well once to shoot a documentary. <laughs> I'm Tristan and I have the same story as them as well. Also, uh, we all went to the same film school after. And yeah, it's really nice to see kind of like a whole generation of all of us actually. So what we're going to do today is we wanted to look back on our Looking China experience through one of the most important things I think we all experienced, which was the round, you know, Lazy Susan table where kind of brought people together so now it's bringing us back together yeah like even even though we never met these people everything was family style which is awesome uh, yeah and i was sharing around the yeah. sort of sharing tool i guess 100 yeah. percent. so in each of the cups there's a little question for us and we're going to answer it so do you want to do the honors christian oh great okay um so can i take anyone yeah you decide okay i feel the one not next to the dragon is calling me yeah. Okay, so the first question is, um, what did you think of the cultural depth of China from your visit? The second time I went, we went to a to Fairy Mountain and around the area we sort of traveled and sort of climbed our way up the mountain and seeing how different the people are, yet they share so many of the same values was really sort of eye-opening because I think in South Africa there's such a distinct difference between all the provinces and all of the cultures and people, but in China it seems more unified and that there's a sort of shared um, homogenous culture which was really cool to see. Yeah, and what about you, Yaku? How did you experience the cultural depth? Yo, for me it was really interesting. Um, they asked me sort of a similar question actually um, at the end of it when I was presenting my film. And something that really stood out for me is, you know, like China is such a long history. You know, it's been going since for thousands of years, whereas South Africa, you know, this sort of the country only started like 300 years or so years ago. So just going there um, and my sort of subject was about, um, it was called Fishing Town and there was all this history where battles were fought and it was like a, it was like a whole, you know, thing that happened almost a thousand years ago. And I was like, this is awesome. And there's a lot of culture. Yeah, I think just, understanding um, history in context of that was just... Same with me with the history where where I went, we did a film on a sixth generation swordsmith oh, and right. the craft actually got passed down from Genghis Khan to his family when Genghis Khan conquered that area. So I agree, I think the, the, the depth of history is just insane. But for me, what was very interesting is because we went to the Northwest is I personally didn't know that there was like a whole different culture of China in terms of religion as well, where it's not necessarily your traditionally thought Chinese religions, but Islam was actually quite big where I was. And for me, that was super interesting because I didn't know that beforehand mm. um, going into it. But yeah, yeah, wow. All right, let me spin it around. I'm gonna go, I'm also gonna skip one. Here we go. All right. What is the most challenging aspect of your filmmaking process for Looking China? Most challenging aspect was understanding all of the history. You know, um, I think Fishing Town where I was, it was the site of this ancient battle um, that happened. But then after that, more sort of cultural things happened. There's like a whole carving in the mountain of, uh, I think as a laying Buddha. And then um, just understanding everything in context and then finding that one story that I wanted to tell. Uh, eventually, I've set, uh, we settled on this awesome story about this uh, curator who's retired now, but he um, has, has made his entire career just out of you know, writing down the history and getting everything sorted. So I think the most difficult part was just taking in all this information and then processing it. Um, but yeah, no, I, I had the best helpers and everybody who translated and stuff was, was really cool. I think sort of touching on what you said, the both the challenge but also one of my favorite aspects about it was the fact that I'm coming into this new country and this new culture um, with sort of a Western lens and I'm trying to filter it through my point of view while still making sure that I pay respect and I um, tell these true stories of these people that I'm talking to. Um, 
without sort of the sort of Western lens um, blurring the image, if that makes mm -hmm. sense. Mm -hmm. um, but it was also like, like I said, it's one of the funnest parts because you get to really like engross yourself and like dive deep into these um, people's lives. Yeah, definitely. No, definitely. I think same here as well. The most challenging part for me, I think, was just, you know, as you say, with the Western lens, trying to communicate, you know, the right questions you want to ask to bring out the best story possible because of such a language barrier. I mean, where we were, I think the biggest challenge was even our Chinese counterparts, they spoke a different dialect mm -hmm. of Mandarin compared to the people we were interviewing. So, so even they actually struggled to to understand what was going on. But I mean, I think that's all part of the fun because you know, that's where you find your story is you might ask certain questions that will trigger certain emotions and then you just bring it out from there. Yeah, definitely. <laughs> yeah. It's up to you now. Oh, okay, yeah. it's up to me. <laughs> Let's go for fish. What was it like visiting China? Was it what you expected? Um, I think it was way more than what I expected, just purely because um, it was a completely different side of China to, I think, what the Western world views. It wasn't a Beijing or a Shanghai. It was basically on the Mongolian border. So it was something very different to, I think, what my initial perception was, but it was very beautiful. We were in like a massively mountainous region and yeah, just a stunning here. Huh? Yeah, it's a very beautiful country. Yeah. It was, I don't know, it was a big culture shock just sort of going there because I think South Africa feels very flat in comparison. <laughs> Um, and then you go to China and it's mountains and tall buildings and it's just like a lot to take in, but like in the best way possible. Yeah, yeah, um, I think, I think, yeah, I didn't expect it to be that big. Like, <laughs> I don't know, in my mind, China was always, but you know, the, the globe is always curved and like Africa is for us is sort of in the middle. Mm -hmm. So then China doesn't look as big as it actually is. But then even when we were like flying just from Beijing to Chongqing, which is, um, you know, from sort of like the upper corner to the middle, it was like a four hour flight. And I was thinking flying from Johannesburg to Cape Town is a two hour flight. No, like definitely. how far is this place? And then also seeing like sort of more on the Beijing side, there's like a lot of farming ground when you just look out of the airplane and then at some point it just becomes mountains and I was like yeah I was I was very very cool for me nice awesome man I think it's, it's me again. you again <laughs> um, let's do Wee. let's go to this one okay um, how did you enjoy working with other filmmakers from other countries so both the times I went I think the sort of communal aspect of creating films in sort of short uh, periods of time, and all working hard, really sort of brings people together, kind of mm. feels like summer camp in a way. <laughs> um, so you really get to like grow attached to these people and the worst part about going, doing Looking China is the saying goodbye bit and they yeah. don't prepare you for it. And every time it kind of catches you off guard, it just like rips your heart apart having to say goodbye to people and um, you might never see again. Because um, these people, everyone that we met it was just so cool and they just loved filmmaking and they worked so hard and their films were so great and then it's just like goodbye <laughs> definitely it's like so final almost yeah but I, I mean even on my side with that so we went with uh, romanians and argentinians and obviously there was a bit of a vibe with the argentinians because of rugby which we all have in common mm -hmm. but um it was just so interesting to see like different countries outlooks on 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 what filmmaking means to them and the approaches how they shoot and edit is like the pacing is different the mm. looks are different it's fascinating very different and mm. and i think that's what actually really i think my favorite moment with that was sitting in the edit room and everyone was making their films but everyone would kind of help each other out there was that community yeah. aspect and i think that's one of the best things about looking china is it's a very worldly thing. Yes, we're there to shoot, um, you know, a Chinese narrative, but it's through our own lenses in different ways, you know, and how we perceive it. Yeah, yeah, no, I definitely agree. Like what you were saying about China bringing different countries together in China, you know, it's like a, it's like a thing where before you, like before going there, I was like, oh yeah, maybe I'll go visit that country, maybe this, maybe that. And then going to China sort of served as like a meeting po point for all these countries. And uh, when we went, it was the BRICS countries. Um, and 
you know, meeting people from Russia and India and all these places that, uh, you know, I, I wouldn't even have thought about really interacting with. And it's, it's crazy who you become sort of attached to. And like when you find those similarities, like I found a lot of sort of similarities between India mm. and South Africa. Obviously it was the cricket that we were talking about at that point. But yeah, no, I, I was, I'm so grateful that I got to like just meet people out of the experience as well as do a film, you know? No, 100%, awesome. man. Yeah. I need to find the last one. I think it's, yeah, it's yeah, over there. <laughs> cool. <laughs> Come on. All right. How did you eventually find your Looking China story for your film? Ooh. Okay, well, for mine, um, I knew it was going to be on sword making, but for me, that wasn't what it was only about. Um, as I got to know the family I was filming, I realized that a big thing for them was passing down, you know, skills from father to son. And that's what my story then revolved around. And I tried to write a greater narrative for how, you know, in China, things are progressing. And actually all around the world, you know, there is that, that shift where things are not always passed down, but it's about the knowledge that's passed down, not necessarily the skill. And what was interesting is that the guy I was interviewing, he, he really felt that his son should actually not carry on sword making. Like he should know how to do it, but he should live his own life. And for me, that was like a really cool story. And like a pro yeah. very progressive point yeah, of view. Yeah, yeah. Especially for like a rural area, you know, it's so, I don't know, lineage and legacy based. Yeah. Definitely, wow. definitely. Yeah. Um, for me, so I think, you know, when you get the initial subject, I think you realize that this is just a vessel for you to tell a more human story. And for us, so we got this cool watch shop and initially I was going to tell something about time and, you know, generations and stuff. And then in the corner there, um, there's like a line of guys all fixing watches in the front desk. And in the corner, there sits like a very quiet looking guy. And I was like, who's this guy? And what's his story? So we have already at this point, like done interviews with the owner and everything. And we just drag him upstairs and we start interviewing him. And then like this amazing story sort of comes out sort of naturally. And I think the biggest lesson that you can kind of take away from it is it's like being open, I guess, mm. because I think every place has a story and it's your responsibility as a filmmaker to uncover that story. Mm. Well, so we've come to the end of our questions, but I have one question for all of you. Ooh. What would you say to someone that is potentially considering signing up for the Looking China program? And what can they expect? I mean, just do it. <laughs> if you get the opportunity, do it. Yeah, I guess it's, you know, it's, it's such a life-changing experience, both from a filmmaker and just as like a personal um, like thing. Uh, you, you sort of go expecting one thing and you come out a completely changed person. That's like, you've sort of gone through the trenches of making a um, story in a different country. You've, you've kind of like faced all these like sort of cha little mini challenges of like trying to communicate in different languages and trying to like just travel around. Um, and you sort of come back with all these new tools in your arsenal. And I think it's such a valuable experience. And I think you just grow so much from it. Definitely. I think, I know if, I'm sure for you guys as well, but it, it changed the way I look at doing things, I yeah. think, in my life. And it, it happened at an interesting time because I just finished studying and you know you're a bit apprehensive about going into the world to make films and you literally put into this position where it challenges every single skill set you have. And I think you, you, I agree with you. I think you learn a lot about yourself through that and you learn what is your own essence of a filmmaker.